My name is Simon Peter. One day, my partners and I were cleaning our nets after a long, hard night of fishing. We were tired. We were discouraged. We had nothing to show for our efforts. Jesus was preaching, as usual, to a large number of people that followed him from here to there, listening to his every word. He asked that he sit in my boat. So I rowed out a little way so that his voice would carry. After he finished teaching, he asked that I row out a little farther and throw my nets into the water again. I told him it was pointless. We had fished all night. We had not caught a single fish. But I did as he asked. I was amazed. The fish, the number of fish, our nets begin to break as we pull them in the boat. Our boats begin to sink under the weight of all the fish. Amazing. I fell on my knees in front of my Lord, feeling sinful and faithless in his holy presence. He told me that I would no longer be a catcher of fish, but of men. I didn't understand, but I left my fish, I left my boats, I left my livelihood, I left everything to follow Jesus, and I've never looked back. Tonight, he tells this tw these 12 men, his faithful disciples, that one of us will betray him. I vainly promised that I would follow him even unto death. He looked into my eyes and told me that before the rooster crows, that I would deny him three times. Deny him? Am I not the rock he called me to be? Could I lose my Lord, my friend, because I'm not strong enough to be faithful? Is it I? I have been known as Peter's little brother Andrew since the day I was born. Years ago, I left the fishing business to follow that fiery preacher, John the Baptizer. He was anointed by God to prepare the way for the long-awaited Messiah. And now I follow him. I love to bring people to Jesus. I brought my brother to Jesus and I've watched him grow into a strong leader among us. Once I brought the little boy with the five loaves and the two fish to see Jesus. I have even brought Gentiles to meet the master because he is open and loving to anyone who is searching for the truth. But Jesus has enemies in high places. Enemies who would love to silence him or even see him die. And now he speaks of a betrayer in our midst. Oh, please do not let it be me who brings sorrow to my Lord. Jesus, is it I? I am James. I'm known as James the Lesser. To distinguish me from the many other men among us named James, including one who sits at this table tonight. I suppose some would be offended by that label, Lesser. After all, by nature, we would rather be known as greater than Lesser. But since coming to follow Jesus, I've come to not mind so much. And I'm slowly learning the truth of the saying among us that John, the son of Zacharias, said when he looked upon Jesus and said, he must increase, but I must decrease. I hope I'm willing to do that, be less that he may be seen as greater, but I know sometimes 
I'm still not there. And I should be. Since Jesus called me to be among his first disciples, I have seen the most miraculous things. Jesus has the power to calm a raging sea. The wind, the waves, even the rain obeys his voice. Jesus has power over demons. He cast out evil spirits, and he gave us, his first disciples, the power to do the same in his name. Jesus has the power to heal. He healed so many who had suffered for years, even from birth. And greater still, Jesus has the power to forgive sin. Now he says that one of these men who sits at this table, one, one of us who eats and drinks with him, will betray him. How could anyone doubt that he is our Lord, the Messiah? After walking and talking with him all of this time, after seeing prophecies fulfilled, after seeing miracle after miracle, and proof after proof. <coughs> he has called each of us to follow him. How could anyone turn away? Is it I? My name is James. John is my younger brother. 
We used to work with Peter and Andrew in the fishing industry. Jesus called us to follow him the same day that he called Peter, and we did, thinking he would establish his kingdom on earth and that we would be his right-hand man. Jesus calls John and me the sons of thunder. Actually, we're the sons of Zebedee, a rich and powerful man in this community who is a personal friend of some of the more influential religious leaders. At one time, I had hoped this would assure me a position of power in the new kingdom. In fact, my mother suggested that I sit at Jesus' right hand when he claimed his throne, and John sit at his left. After all, it was we who were invited to the mountain with Jesus, and we saw him transfigured. His face shone like the sun, and the voice of God spoke out of heaven. He chose me. He chose each of us. How could one of us betray him? We have seen his perfect adherence to the law. We have heard the voice of God say, this is my son. We have been present during the countless miracles, healings, works no mere man can accomplish. Could it be my brother, John? Could it be me? Is it I? I am Matthew, and before I became a disciple of Jesus, I worked for the Roman government, collecting taxes. We're called publicans, that is the official name, but many call us other names more vile. We are hated for many reasons. No one likes paying taxes, but that is especially true if you hate the people that run the government. To some, I am a traitor for simply taking a job that associates me with the Romans. Beyond that, though, that so many of us Publicans would skim off personal profits from the revenue that we would collect and pocket the difference. People hated him. But Jesus did not hate me. Jesus loved me. And Jesus called me from that tax collector's table and said, follow me. And I did. And with my wealth, I threw a feast in his honor. Yes, Jesus loved me and others hated him. And now, he speaks of a traitor among us. Will the others immediately suspect me, the former publican? Lord, is it I? Before Jesus called me, I was a member of the Zealots. We believed in God, and that God alone rules over this holy nation of Israel. And we refused to pay homage or taxes to any Roman governor. It goes against my very nature. But Jesus teaches that God ordains all powers and governments on earth, allowing them to rule over us. And we must give our due and treat them with respect. Since following the Christ, I've tried to channel my zeal into telling others about Jesus, God's Son, and reaching out to people for His kingdom. Is there a spy among us? A Roman, perhaps? How could any follower of Jesus question His power and authority he is God. He is God. He is our King. He is greater than any government. Could I somehow revert to my old ways? Could I finally betray my King? Is it I?
Bartholomew to some, Nathaniel to others. I've been a diligent student of the scriptures and was a disciple of John the baptizer. My friend Philip first introduced me to this Jesus of Nazareth, saying that this was the one of whom the prophets had written. At first, I was skeptical. Jesus of Nazareth? <coughs> that filthy, immoral place? <laughs> Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And yet it was John who says that Jesus was the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. And then, then I met Jesus. He was fascinating. He seemed to already know me as if he knew my innermost thoughts. Now I have always been a devout man, but this Jesus seemed to offer something much more intimate, more personal than my religion had ever offered me before. You see, for over a thousand years, we have celebrated the feast of the Passover, remembering the bitter slavery in Egypt by partaking in the bitter herb, remembering the 10 plagues with the 10 drops of wine from the goblet, remembering how the blood of the sacrificial lamb caused the angel of death to pass over, sparing the firstborn of the Israelites, remembering how God in his mercy set his people free. That beautiful story. How they had no time to prepare leavened bread, but instead were forced to prepare unleavened bread in the warmth of the desert sun. And now Jesus takes this unleavened bread and says, take, eat, this is my body. And Jesus takes this cup of wine and says, drink, for this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. I don't understand. What could cause me to betray my friend? Lord, is it I? My name is Philip. Jesus came to me one day while I was working and simply said, follow me. I spent an entire day with him, and I was truly convinced that this is the promised one. It has taken some time for me to understand that this man, this fulfilled promise, is actually God here among us. Recently, thousands of men, women, and families were sitting on a hillside listening to him teach. Jesus asked me where we could buy bread to feed them all. Initially, I thought the actual physical call. Well, our treasury doesn't hold such funds. I gave no thought to the possibility of a miracle or Jesus. But Jesus took five pieces of bread, two tiny fish, prayed over them, and broke them to pieces. He fed thousands, and we collected 12 baskets full of leftovers. God here among us, who would deny this promise one? Or who would give into the innermost proofs? Could any of us forget his power? His compassion. Is it I? His hands. Carpenter hands. rough, weathered hands, yet so gentle and loving. His hands reached out and touched a leper, and the disease was erased from his body. His hands reached out and touched Peter's mother-in-law, and her fever disappeared. His hands reached out and lifted Jairus, his daughter, from her deathbed. His hands have opened the ears of the deaf and the eyes of the blind 
and have healed the bones of the lame. Countless infirmities, illnesses, gone. His hands reached out, blessing little children when others would have turned them aside. His hands reached down and rescued Peter from a churning sea that would have swallowed him. His hands folding in prayer, blessing and breaking bread. Those hands that have given healing and kindness, shown mercy and love. Those hands that served me, Thaddeus, and his other brothers, and worshiped his father. They are the hands of God in this very room. We've all known the blessing of those hands. We've all seen the miracles those hands have performed. Who would betray him into the hands of an enemy? Will I, Thaddeus, betray you? Is it I?
They still didn't get it, these disciples. But then sometimes neither do we. They had all entered this room, having walked the dusty streets. And the custom was that a servant, usually the lowliest servant, would wash the feet of all who had been bidden to the supper. But no servant was present, or was there. The disciples had just been arguing about who was the greatest disciple. Surely none of them could be expected to stoop so low as to wash the other's feet. After all, they were the first disciples. They were above all the other followers of Jesus, weren't they? But they had forgotten the words of Jesus who said, If one would be first, he must be last. And so the master had stood up in order that he might bid them and take up the basin and the towel. Jesus, I've forgotten the words that you have spoken, promises that burn within my heart have now grown dim. With a doubting heart, I follow the paths of
say well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say to you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Jesus calls me the beloved disciple that I have reason to be proud. Oh, how I have learned the opposite is true. You see, I once thought that I might hold a place of power and prestige in his kingdom, but he has shown me over and over again that the war he wages is a spiritual battle. He reaches out to the needy, offers. He does not seek out the rich and powerful. He dines in the homes of sinners, common folk, not the elite. God has sent his son because he loved the world, to the lowly me, so much. So much that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus, he is the way, the truth. He is. Even though we are his closest friends and followers, I don't believe we truly understand the depth of his love. I believe he would give his life for mine. How could I not do the same for him? Will my pride cause me to stumble? Will I betray him? Could I? Is it I? I've been listening to Jesus speak around this table tonight, and I simply don't understand. Words meant to comfort, met with confusion and misunderstanding. Talk of betrayal, met with disbelief and suspicion. And where is he going? He can't leave now. There's too much to do right here, right now. Sometimes I marvel that I, Thomas, I've seen him with my own eyes. I've touched my Lord and Master with my own hands. I've watched him perform wonders, change lives. I don't want to see him go. Not now, not ever. And how can we follow him if we don't know where he's going? Is there something that I've done or will do to contribute to this betrayal he speaks of?
Has he seen my lack of faith? My hidden doubts? My fear? Is it I? see them all, uttering that wonder, is it I? No one seems to know. They all think it might be them. No one knows. Well, almost no one. I know. It will be me. I'm disappointed, and I'm disillusioned. And during a time of pondering what to do in my disgust, an opportunity arose. Look, I'm a Jew. I've been brought up to respect the leaders of the Jews. I thought Jesus was such a leader to be followed. But the other leaders, the chief priests, the scribes, these great scholars, were or studying the words of Moses and the prophets, they want Jesus out of the way. They sought my help. And I felt the urge to do just that. A strong compulsion. Something moved in my heart. The leaders feared the disciples and the mobs that had thronged him this week. But they teach that this mob, like most mobs, is not right. To them, Jesus is a liar who blasphemes the one true God. They feel his claims to the Messiah are false. They have hatched a plan and have paid me to help them. Thirty pieces of silver to provide them the chance to arrest Jesus in private. Many signs and wonders have been done by Jesus. Many times he seems to be hearts of men and women. They utter not a word, but he knows. He knows. These other eleven, they do not know, but I know. And he knows. One of you shall betray me. Is it I, Judas, and I shall go. Jesus is right. One of you. I know.
the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, shall leave me alone. And yet, I am not alone. Because I said, the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In this world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Ye have heard how I said unto you, that I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father. For the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you, before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh, and hath nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father. And as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Amen. 